In the early 1920s, the modern business suit began appearing in offices. As the century progressed, styles modified slightly, but it largely remained formal. It wasn't until the 1980s and 90s that office attire started to trend towards business casual. Now fast forward to 2019. 50% of reported companies allow for casual wear in the office, which is up from 32% reported in 2014. Here at Cheddar, we have a casual dress code, so it's up to employee discretion on what to wear. Well, normally I just wear what I would wear any other day, jeans, a t-shirt, or a tank top. I normally wear a sweater, jeans. A good amount of athleisure. I usually come to work with jeans and a knit top and sneakers. However, some take this freedom a little too far, though. So how did we get from buttoning up suits to slipping on t-shirts? It can actually be tied back to a series of events catalyzed by one single shirt in Hawaii. In the late 1940s, the city of Honolulu was searching for a way to give relief to employees during the hot summer months, as well as attract tourists. So it launched a campaign called Aloha Week, which encouraged workers to wear Aloha attire for an entire week each year. In the 1960s, one man took it a step further. Wilson Cannon Jr., the president of the Bank of Hawaii, began coming to work in an Aloha shirt every Friday. The Hawaiian Fashion Guild took notice and launched a campaign to promote the extended tradition by shipping Aloha shirts to members of the government in order for the idea to gain traction. It was instated because of a guild of you know, manufacturers and people who sold Hawaiian shirts on the island and they wanted to sell more shirts. What I think is interesting about it is that it kind of came from a sort of capitalist vantage point of wanting to sell products. It didn't come from wanting to make workers happy or give people expression. The effort was successful and Aloha Fridays were officially introduced in 1966. The tradition even inspired this popular song called Aloha Friday. It's Aloha Friday. Meanwhile, the mainland slowly took notice of this new trend starting in Silicon Valley. The Aloha shirt became popular on the West Coast as tourists and soldiers brought them back from Hawaii. Hewlett Packard had begun its own version of Aloha Fridays. This tradition of informality originally began in the 1950s as a beer bust, where HP employees could crack open a beer at the end of a Friday shift. Over the years, this ritual evolved into what was called Blue Sky Days. Workers were allowed to dress casually at the end of the week. The company also encouraged employees to use this time to be more innovative and craft new ideas. At the same time, there was a new population beginning to emerge within the workplace. That's when women start to enter the workforce. You can't have a uniformity of gray flannel suits anymore when all of a sudden women are walking around and it's considered taboo for a woman to be in a pantsuit. What are women going to wear? How are they going to blend in? They automatically add a diversity there. Diversity of wardrobe, diversity of clothing. This diversity of wardrobe encouraged men to break away from the norm. And in the 1980s, this meant khakis and a button down. By the early 1990s, the trend of casual wear in the office had made its way to the East Coast. But without any official guidelines, it caused confusion amongst workers and some dress inappropriately. Rick Miller, who was working in public relations for Dockers, said, quote, People were showing up in Hawaiian print shirts or sandals and shorts. Frankly, there were concerns on the part of management that work might become too much fun. The Levi Strauss Company spotted this as an opportunity to launch a unique marketing campaign. In 1992, the company sent out a brochure titled A Guide to Business Casual Wear to 25,000 HR managers throughout the country. It featured tips such as keep wrinkled, stained, or dirty clothing out of the workplace, and casual does not mean sloppy. You can dress casually and look professional. The brochure pictured several different outfit ideas that included Dockers and Levi jeans in order to promote their brand. Levi's claims that this eventually evolved into what is now known as Casual Fridays. By 1995, a survey by Evans revealed that nine out of 10 companies allowed for casual wear at least once a week. It became increasingly evident that sporting a suit didn't necessarily mean success in the workplace. Casual fight, what does that mean? That means we just dress like we would at home. But you're not at home. No, but it's just casual Friday. So. Yeah, I know. You told me that already. What do you do on casual Friday? Well, we just uh, come into our work, but we dress 
casually. Steve Jobs wore turtlenecks and Mark Zuckerberg was donning sweaters. In 2016, J.P. Morgan, the largest U.S. bank by assets, implemented a business casual dress code for all employees. Workers no longer had to wear suits and pantsuits and could don khakis and polos. Goldman Sachs, a well-known Wall Street firm, followed suit in 2019. It looks like the trend of casual wear in the workplace is here to stay. Major companies such as Google and Twitter offer a casual dress code option. In the past, both companies have been ranked on some of the best places to work list. It's no surprise that employees appreciate flexibility within the office. In fact, 33% of employees said they would turn down a job offer or quit if there was a conservative dress code required. An additional 33% said they would rather have a casual dress code than $5,000 extra dollars in annual pay. I think we're now in a point where clothing is more about identity than being appropriate in given scenarios. Office dress codes at their core are about this idea of appropriate. What is and what isn't appropriate. It looks like the trend of casual wear in the workplace is here to stay. The traditional 9-5 schedule is also changing. New research shows that one in five employees work remotely and more than half have the option. In fact, 43% of workers stated they would rather work from home. Whether it's working from home, summer Fridays, or unlimited vacation, progressing towards a more casual office environment appears to be key in attracting talent for companies. So the next time you pick out a pair of jeans and t-shirt from your closet for work, just remember, your outfit choice was inspired by the simple tradition of the Hawaiian shirt. What are your thoughts on an office dress code? Have these changes gone too far? Tell us in the comments below. And while you're already here, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And go ahead and click on that notification bell to be the first to know when we post new videos.